Hello, you are here to learn how to do clone ID or just clones shooting back at you because you made a zombie game and you're kind of bored of it. You want to have actual, you know, human beings shoot at you. Cool. So you came to the right place because I discovered this a year ago and I was very happy that I did. So I will erase everything uh, so that way we can start from, you know, scratch. Uh, but I am going to copy this. Uh, sprite so that way I don't have to draw it up Cool, so let me just put that guy back and As he was before he was purple So this guy will be purple so that this is our player and Then we have our enemy Okay, just going through the sprites drawing up the sprites here now you can just pause the video and take time to draw your sprites or You know you can just start off basic like me Cool, so now we want to go to the player, we want basic movement. Oh, okay. Well, as you can see, I already made the script here. So, when flag clicked, forever, point towards mouse pointer, yep. And if key W press, then move three steps. Cool, works. Now, uh, I've already got the variables here, I will delete them and create them again. So, for the enemy, when flag clicked, hide. When I start as a clone, show. Um, so this is uh, this is so you don't see the the sprite because we don't have any code for the sprite. We only have code for the clones. Now, uh, what we want is to create a variable called the clone counter and the clone ID. So this is where all the kind of magic kind of happens. It's sorting for clone identification. So, we have the clone counter, and then we have the clone ID. Remember, make sure this one, clone ID, is for this sprite only. And what this means is that it'll be separate for each clone. Uh, I don't know what that's about. Anyways, so, so, when you start it off, you will want the clone counter to zero off, and... You will, well, I mean, if you got, if you got clones, then you probably got it on a repeat. So you will repeat. I'm, I'm just gonna ignore this up here. Uh, so anyways, um, so you're gonna have your thing on a repeat most likely. So that's how I will do it. So change clone counter by one and create clone of myself. So whenever it creates a clone, it will change the clone counter by one to keep the identification up to date with the clones. Uh, and then we would want to go here to set the clone ID to the clone counter. So uh, a clone is created, the clone counter is changed up one. So before it was zero, now it's one, and we have one clone. Uh, now this one clone sets the clone ID to clone counter, which equals one. So now this clone is clone ID one. And then the repeat happens for the second clone, so on and so on. So now the second one is now identified as clone 2, clone ID 2. So now I hope you understand from that. Might still be confusing. Uh, let me just delete these lists as well so we can go through them together. Now, um, let's add in a go to random position so we can really test this. Uh, we also want a forever, so we want to update these lists. So as you saw that I deleted. So first, create um, an X position and a Y position list for the enemy. So I will go enemy X, enemy Y, and also create enemy direction for later. And so forever, replace. Oh, actually, first we need to introduce these. So you want add X. Y and just kind of zero it off here. So here, so now we've got a list that we'll add in. So only when there's another clone. So there's ten clones and there'll be ten X variables and ten Y variables. Cool. And you also want to make sure you delete. All of them at the start of the game. So that way they zero off, you know. 
So this means here that no matter what number this is, it will always work. Unless it's above the clone limit uh, that Scratch has. Anyway, so here we want to replace. Item direction, we want item X, item Y, X position, Y position, direction, and then here's where the magic is, clone ID, clone ID, clone ID. So like I said before, if you were clone 1, then your clone ID carries the number 1. So this will mean that replace item of X, 1, replace item of Y, 1. And over here, so when we have like four numbers, let's say 14, 26, blah, 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 blah. It will only uh, pick up on your specific variable in the, sp uh, in the list. Cool. Now uh, we can hide these variables. And now, um, this, I'm going to create the how the clone like works and wants to shoot at me and aims at me and whether or not he shoots or not very basic you will change it you will make it so he can't see you at some time sometimes he can see you if you shoot then you'll start shooting I'm not gonna do any of that I'm just gonna just show you the basic script for it and you will change it up so forever point towards player Now here's where we make our bullet. So enemy bullet. Normally bullets are just uh, a yellow line. I mean that's what they look like in Hexel Ridge or in general. So the bullets look when they're whizzing by. Of course uh, we'll have a uh, basic bullet like that. So when the flag clicked, when I start as a clone, hide. Show. And then here we want a bullet shot from. So what this means, uh, also for all sprites, so what this uh, variable means is that um, the enemy, right? So in this script here, it will create a clone of enemy bullet and it will set bullet shot from to clone ID. So that means that Clone 1 shoots, and we all know that clone ID carries the number 1 now. Then bullet shot is now set to 1. And if this clone was number 4, then we'll set bullet shot from number 4. So then over here, uh, we go, go to X, Y, item of, item of, also point in direction. So direction, enemy direction, boom, boom, X, Y, and then we use this variable up here, cool. and then forever, I don't know, repeat until, so now we're making the actual bullet moving stuff move uh, 20 steps because it's 25 steps because it is a bullet and we need this just to kind of uh, this part here is just so this move block here is just so the bullet actually goes starts moving from outside of the barrel so it doesn't start moving from its face it moves from the barrel of the gun the muzzle and then here we have the moving thing for us so or touching player edge. Cool. So here I will the bullet will shoot until it touches the edge or the player. And then delete this clone. Wait zero seconds. When you put down zero, it doesn't actually wait just zero seconds, but actually wait like zero point zero 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 something seconds. And that's enough time to give the player enough time to realize that it's been hit because if it deletes automatically then the player doesn't know it doesn't have enough time to say oh I've been hit minus my health by 20 cool so 
I'll explain this to you. So go to, well, as I said before, these bullets shot from now carry the number of the clone ID. And as I said before, um, your clone ID only interacts with your variable number on this list. So if you were number four, uh, number three, what? no, so yeah, if you were number four, then your exposition is said to be 235. So now this, this right here carries a number of 235. And we'll do the same for both of these lists here. So I can hide that. And now I think it already works. Uh, you just need to add a weight here. So pick random. The reason why we do the pick random is because uh, if they were all just shooting at the same time, you can imagine this variable will have kind of a hard time with, uh, not really keeping up, but it'd just be kind of weird. Uh, hard to explain. So, maybe it's a rapid fire gun, so you go 0 0.05, so like one second maybe. Uh, so this makes the clones still shoot at a fast rate, but... They're also still a bit different to each other. Cool, so look at that. Yep, so it works. Isn't that beautiful? And you can see here, the bullet shot from is constantly changing to the coin that's actually shooting at me. Um, so you'll notice that they kind of weird the way they turn around and look at me. So you can fix that by... Um, if, if we go here, and we actually put that in there. So yeah. Now they move around normally. Yep. And you can even do something cool like forever else touching mouse pointer, say 0 0.1, say clone ID. Um, let's see, one, seven, eight, six, five, um, we'll just do them, three, two, yeah, so, very cool. Now you know, well, hopefully you know, how to make clones be able to shoot back at you. And also, um, you don't need to create a list for its health, you just add a, for the sprite only health thing like this. So for the sprite only health, and then when it gets down to zero, you can have the clone die and it still works. Um, yeah, but when the clone dies, you do not you do not remove, right? You do not delete any part of the list. You keep the list. Maybe someone else has got a better way of doing it, but it doesn't matter at all. Just keep the just keep the variable in the list. Don't delete anything. Except for the client. That's what you delete. Cool. Thank you.